Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, so this week's painting is going to be really fun and a very bright colors here. It's going to be a full rainbow, uh, and it's inspired by like a spring or summer pattern that you'd find on perhaps like a dress or something like that. Um, and it's going to be super simple, going to take you through every step of the way as we usually do here. I have my four standard brushes that I use in most of my classes here. So I have a, a large square wash brush, medium sized pointed brush, and two small detail brushes. These guys come in a kit. I'm going to get these in the water cup off the side of my screen. The colors that I have to start with for today's background step, so I have a fair amount of white here, some phthalo green, a little bit of cadmium orange, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, cobalt blue, and some violet, aka purple. To see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, check the description box below. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. So we're gonna get really creative today with our background step. And you could even mix it up uh, with this one. If you didn't want to do the same colors that I'm doing, you could do whatever colors that you love. But I'm gonna do a full rainbow because I love full rainbows. <laughs> I'm gonna grab my medium sized brush to start and I'm gonna start with a beautiful uh, yellow orange color. And I'm going to do a large circle to sort of start off my composition here. And I think I'll probably just go ahead and fill this in with this same brush. And that beautiful sunny orange yellow color. So pretty. All right, we want a nice clean circle here. But don't worry too much about it being a perfect circle with today's layers. It's truly very forgiving. And all of our shapes are gonna be natural. Okay, so my beautiful, sort of like sun here maybe. But we're getting abstract. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go around my sun with some sunny yellow. almost like a sunset color. And then go around and do a sort of a wobbly, interesting shape around it. And here's where we're really getting creative today because this can really be any kind of fun, abstract background that you like. And let's go ahead and speed things up by grabbing our bigger brush. And I'm just doing that fresh yellow on clean white canvas here, very satisfying. Get that all filled in, our fun little wonky shape. Remember that you could use this brush flat like this or like this and get a fine line. Sort of sun shaped, sort of egg shaped. Very nice right around our orange doing a whole abstract composition today before we add our more realistic elements. We're really just having fun with background colors and just being inspired by spring and summer florals and shapes and feelings and vibes. All right, looking good, moving right along. 
think I'll take some of my pink now in a couple places. Look at that beautiful color that it makes with the white. And I'm gonna do a sort of a blobby shape over here and maybe a round shape over here. And then get those guys filled in nicely as well. These are the kind of paintings we could be selling for millions. <laughs> I do too much. I've done hundreds of hundreds of paintings. But I could be doing really simple stuff like this. And that's what the, uh, the modern grades look like <laughs> oftentimes. Sometimes they're really amazing too, but sometimes they're pretty simple. We got a lot more to do on today's though. But this is, you know, what could it be? It really evokes some questions in me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna rinse the pink out of my brush entirely and I'm gonna come in now with some of my favorite gorgeous phalo green. And I think I might even add a little bit of yellow just to make it a little bit more greenish and a little less blue, but still sort of a beautiful tropical color. And I'm gonna do a sort of a triangular-y shape maybe, whatever you like. In fact, I think I might take that all the way off the side. Not an exact science. It's an art, folks. Doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Mine doesn't have to be exactly like my original. <laughs> Always feel free to get creative and mix things up, particularly with backgrounds like these. that are wonky and abstract. Okay, looking good. I like that. I think I might just leave that green like so. And then we're gonna be filling in these spaces now. So we actually don't want any white canvas showing. After this step. So I want it all filled in with our beautiful different colors. Okay. Beautiful bright blue. And then how about some orange right next door? in this little remaining strip. Yeah, I think I'll probably take some color in here and then downgrade my brush size to a smaller brush. To fill in those last little tiny gaps of white canvas so that I have seamless colors laid next to each other. Very psychedelic and groovy, baby. inspired by the colors of my channel, but also just my personal groovy style. All right, I'm pulling a little bit of blue in there and since they are opposite each other on the color wheel, I'm getting sort of a neutrally brown that I don't really like there since I'm doing the bright colors, so. 
may let that dry for just a minute. Come back and touch things up. Or oh, actually, that looks pretty good. All right, we only have a few more little sections left. Let's grab our purple now. Mixing that with some white as well, of course. And I'm gonna do sort of an interesting shape with my purple. Maybe come down about halfway with it. And then I'll just have a few more spaces left for colors. Truly, folks, get creative today with the background and just get that all filled in with your different pretty colors. Whatever colors you like, just don't go too dark because we're going to do that later. Starting with our light color, starting with the background. And I like how the stripes look next to each other. Stripes of saturated color. Okay, very pretty purple. And I think I'll take a little bit more purple over here as well. Do a sort of curve shape over here. Looking good. And our last little spaces here. Just want to be filled in. Very cute. I think a bright, bright green. A little bit of phthalo into our yellow. And that'll look nice since we're doing a floral. So we gotta have our green tones. And I have that same second to smallest brush. If you're getting in those little tight areas and you need a smaller brush, feel free to use your smaller brush. Whatever you need to. Okay, nice, grassy, sunny, cheerful green. Right next to our teal. All right, that looks good. Okay, my last little section over here, I'm gonna fill in with green as well. And then we'll have our whole background filled in with these beautiful bright rainbow colors and we will be ready for a break and letting this first layer dry okay so you don't want to see any more white canvas showing after this background step Filling it all in in whatever colors our heart desires. These sort of floral paintings, I think, really make nice decor as well. So you could totally customize this to match the colors of your house. All right, and just filling that last little gap. Feel free to get up close and personal to your painting too. I'm sort of struggling sometimes with it being so far away from me. <laughs> but I'm trying not to move my setup. But I'm pulling a little bit of purple into my green there and I don't want to be. Okay. I think I'll even just take some purple and just refine that. <laughs> All right, and 
Just making sure everything looks nice and smooth and seamless. And then we will step away for a few minutes and let this layer dry. I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background and just a couple new colors on our new piece of palette paper here. So I just have some black, some red, and some dark phthalo green. And then I have my medium sized brush. We're gonna jump right back on into things with our main focal point of the painting, uh, which is going to be our Inko leaves. All right, these are these shapes right here that we're going to have sort of front and center of our composition. And I'm going to start with the stem. And again, feel free to use your smaller brush if you would prefer. And then this is going to have a sort of fan shape. I'm going to come on either side here, like so. And then I'm going to go up and all the way around. And we're not going to go along the line of the sun perfectly. So we want to sort of have it be a little off center. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to have a little bit of another leaf sort of coming off the edge there. And from these low points here of our little squiggle, we're going to do a main line. And then we're going to do a bunch of little tiny lines. Very delicately with our brush. Here to get that ginkgo leaf pattern. It's okay if some of your lines are a little bit thicker. That actually sort of adds to it. Okay, it's a pretty forgiving shape. And looks really pretty. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same kind of thing up here. It might be a little bit trickier though, since it's a little bigger. And we can see more of it. This is our main focal point. And I'm going very light handed with this initial line. Connecting it to the stem, sort of the veins of the plant, looking good. Right, and very delicately. I'm going to have all of those little lines in between as well. And we could try with our smallest brush, I suppose. No, I'm going to stick with this second to smallest because when I have to go a long distance with my brush stroke, I don't like to have a super short brush because it doesn't hold very much paint. So that's why I like to keep that one mostly just for the tiny details where I just want to use something almost pencil width. All right, and it's okay if some of your brush strokes are a little bit fuzzy on the canvas texture. It's better to have the slightly fuzzy brush strokes than a super thick line. And it sort of adds to that painterly feel once again. I think that looks pretty cool. Sometimes I'll come back and sort of fine tune lines. I'm being very, very, very light handed with my brush. Ginkgo leaves are just so pretty. I absolutely love this shape. And it's, I think, pretty simple. 
I mean, there are obviously a lot of lines, but nothing too crazy. Just connecting them all together. It's rather meditative, as always. A little bit darker here, of course, towards the center, where all of our lines will meet. Just like so, and we're almost all filled in here already. Not too scary. And sometimes when you get a little heavy handed with this shape, it almost adds to it. Because it just looks like a little divot or fold in the leaf. Okay, looking pretty good. You want to still see a little bit of background, of course, from behind. But I like the way that's looking. We're going to do our other sort of main shape now as well. And it's going to be like a graceful sort of branch coming off the side here. And I'm going to start with also just once again the stem. And I'm going to have a little brush strokes here going off in the direction that I'm going to do these leaves first, but then I'm going to do a little swoop for this shape. I'm going to have a little like fern shape almost, and then this last one is going to be its own little loop. Right, so there we have a nice little natural shape again. And I'm going to just come in here and sort of fine tune things now, as well as add some additional lines. Okay, so then we're gonna have our center line here, as well as a couple right alongside as well. If you can fit them in. You're going to put as many lines in there as you can. And again, you want to be very light handed. So we'll have a nice solid black outline. first and then however many lines you can fit is just fine. So maybe this one I only have three. We want to see a little bit of that rainbow color still sort of peekaboo through. That's what makes this look so pretty. When we are all finished, just to have a little bit of that sort of stained glass effect. However many can fit their different sizes as they grow. We're not even being too particular with our plants here. This is just a floral shape. Here, we were particular with our ginkgo, but... All right, looking good. I like it. Let's do a little bit of black texture a couple places. I'm just going to add a few dots down here 
just because we want to have a little bit of interest. And then we're going to grab our red and do a couple things with this gorgeous bright red as well. I'm going to take a nice solid red line where my orange and my red meet. We'll just kind of stop a little bit shy there of our black. It's all right. And then I think I'll do another little stripey red line over here. Cute. And then we're going to come over here and I'm going to sort of mimic that same floral shape. Looks like maybe sort of a fern over here as well. Very pretty. And we're going to get this great overlap of our colors and our shapes. Might even have what would have been a leaf coming from down there. There's a little bit too much paint here. Let me clean things up slightly. Okay. All right, ten. We'll have one going off in that direction too. We don't want to overwork that. Have it be too thick at the end. Going to do something similar now with green and just add a fun little few green touches here and there. And look at how simple that was just to create such an interesting composition. Okay, and then let's do one more little green guy. He's gonna be layered on top of whatever he's gonna be layered on top of. And we'll just work our way down here. Feel free to move your canvas rather than me keeping it straight. We're just getting that nice floral overlap of all of our different shapes. Okay, let's add a few little dots of green over here as well, because why not? And we're just having fun with any other little abstract elements that you may like. Cute, cute, cute. All right, I like it. I think we are pretty much finished, unless you'd like to add any other little final touches that you might need on your painting. Um, but I'm liking how this one is looking, so I think I'm going to call it good. <laughs> this is a hard one to get yourself to stop because you could really add more. Uh, and I can't wait to see what your paintings look like. I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club where you can share your work, whether it be from painting along with me or just from your own imagination. We'd love to have you over there. Check the description box below for a link to join. And that is all the instruction that I have for us this week. So thank you for painting along. And until next time, stay creative.